I'm convinced one of the reasons Hamas attacked when they did, and I have no proof of this, just my instinct tells me, is because of the progress we were making towards regional integration for Israel and regional integration overall. Welcome to Conversations. I'm Mukhtar Darkhan, your host. Please subscribe to Conversations, like the video, and press the bell icon. And today I want to comment on a speech uh, that was given by President Biden uh, at the White House while he was welcoming the Australian Prime Minister. It appears that Mr. Biden has finally awakened after 20 days of crisis in the Middle East uh, as, uh, as Hamas attacks Israel and uh, commits heinous acts uh, that kill about 1,400 Israelis, uh, nearly 900 of them civilians uh, or more women and children included. And then Israel really responds by bombarding Gaza. Uh, according to some accounts, oh, 7,000 people are dead, mostly civilians. Uh, Israel already killed about 1,500 Hamas fighters who were in Israel. Uh, and uh, and in, the, in Gaza of the 7,000 plus uh, that is touted as the number of civilians who have been killed, uh, one third of them are children. Uh, half of is, uh, Gaza's population is basically children. So Mr. Biden has finally woken up in the president and in the speech, he makes three points that I want to point out. And when this crisis is over, there has to be a vision of what comes next. And in our view, it has to be a two-state solution. It means a concentrated effort for all the parties, Israelis, Palestinians, regional partners, global leaders, to put us on a path toward peace. In the past few weeks, I've spoken to leaders throughout the region, including King Abdullah of Jordan, President Sisi of Egypt, President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority, and just yesterday with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia about making sure there's real hope in the region for a better future. About the need, and I mean this sincerely about the need, to work toward a greater integration for Israel, while insisting that the aspirations of the Palestinian people will be part, will be part of that future as well. The first one he says is that uh, whenever this crisis ends, and that's going to be a long time, and the world is going to be, uh, as I think, a different place by the time this crisis ends. Uh, but anyway, once this crisis ends, he says, there is no returning to 6th October to 2023. We cannot go back to the status quo. Uh, and uh, and therefore, he says that, which means that there has to be a positive uh, hope for the Palestinians and we move towards the two-state solutions, which is what he was advocating. He didn't talk about the two-state solution for at least two weeks since this crisis started, but now he's mentioning the two-state solution. So finally, he's woken up and his uh, staff at the State Department and National Security Council, I guess somebody has discovered that this was America's foreign policy in that area. And what he says is that what it really means is that a concentrated effort by leaders in the industry, et cetera, et cetera. So, so basically he's talking about everybody else uh, working very hard to realize this two-state solution. What he does not say is what he would do uh, as president of the United States and what the United States should do uh, as someone who has completely monopolized this conflict uh, and has stood with Israel so firmly in this particular crisis, uh, undermining the United UN Security Council, uh, as well as other states in the country. What will Mr. Biden do going forward uh, to ensure or work towards a two-state solution? And the first question really is, is he going to ask Israel to stop expanding settlements. You can't have the president of the United States talking about two-state solution while Israel continues to undermine the very possibility of a two-state solution while building new settlements in the area which is designated for the Palestinian state, which is West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. There has to be a dialogue about it, I understand. But will the president tell Israel, stop? Or is this just a lip service because there are a lot of Americans who are asking these questions about America's one-sided posture in this policy? So I'm assuming that either the president is just saying this for the sake of saying it, 
or if he means it, then we need to see some policy as to what the U.S. will do if Israel does not stop. Because the current government of Israel, according to him, according to Joe Biden, is the most extremist government that Israel has ever had. Its goal is to annex uh, West Bank. And so what will the U.S. do? The second point that he makes is very, very interesting. He says that even though he has no evidence, but this is his instinct which tells him that Hamas's attack uh, was essentially as a result of the integration of Israel into the region. So Hamas has attacked Israel to prevent uh, basically the expansion of the Abrahamic Accords uh, and projects such as the India, Middle East, uh, uh, European Economic Corridor, which would have integrated Israel into the into the region, made it part of the region. I'm convinced one of the reasons Hamas attacked when they did, I have no proof of this, as my instinct tells me, is because of the progress we were making towards regional integration for Israel and regional integration overall. And we can't leave that work behind. And one more word on this. I continue to be alarmed about extremist settlers attacking Palestinians in the West Bank that uh, pouring gasoline on fire is what it's like. They, this was a deal. The deal was made, and they're attacking Palestinians in places that they're entitled to be. And it has to stop. They have to be held accountable. And- uh, Israeli tooth is going to uh, the Middle East, uh, investments, etc. So, so, So he seems to be thinking that the reason why Hamas attacked, it's quite interesting that he makes this point, because until now, the, the, the official posture of both Israel, the U.S., and its allies was that there is no past. The world and history began on October 7. Israel did nothing. Hamas just attacked Israel, uh, just like that. Uh, remember when Gutierrez said that there is, uh, the U.N. Secretary General said that these attacks have not happened in a vacuum. It is because of uh, the, the fact that there is no alternative for the Palestinians may have led to this attack. Uh, you should see the st- statements that made by the general secretary. What Mr. Biden is also saying is that Hamas attacks have not come in a vacuum. They have come as a result of critique uh, or as or triggered uh, by uh, the integration of Israel into the region, into the Middle East, without a solution uh, to the Palestinians. And so he goes on to say that, Yes, we should continue to integrate Israel in the region. That is critical. That is very important for peace, etc. But this is the but, which is very interesting, where it says there has to be something done for the Palestinians too. And this is also the content of the letter that 20 Democratic senators wrote to Joe Biden about the Abrahamic Accords before this crisis broke out. And finally, and and I, I want to give him credit for this because... Uh, it took. It must have taken a lot of guts and a lot of pressure from inside his State Department as well as others for him to say this, uh, because he has never said this before. He's never said this before as president. He said that he's alarmed by the extremist settlers in West Bank who are basically committing acts of violence and terrorism. He didn't use the word terrorism. He's alarmed by the extremist settlers, uh, and they need to be held accountable. They are as if they are put throwing fuel uh, on fire and basically creating more problems. Basically, the settlers are doing what Joe Biden fears Hamas and Hezbollah will do, which is expand the conflict and open another front. And that's what the settlers in West Bank are doing. First of all, they're illegal settlers. They shouldn't be there. The second of all, they are violent and armed. And they, yes, I agree with the president of the U.S., they should be held accountable. So what is the U.S. going to do if nobody in Israel holds them accountable. And one more word on this. I continue to be alarmed about extremist settlers attacking Palestinians in the West Bank, that uh, pouring gasoline on fire is what it's like. This was a deal. The deal was made, and they're attacking Palestinians in places that they're entitled to be. It has to stop. They have to be held accountable. So you can't just make statements like that and not have a policy to deal with it because then it's people like me who are cynical will say, oh, this is just BS. 
uh, the president is just BSing just to calm down people who are going to oppose him. Uh, people like Bernie Sanders are at least taking a march on him. And there are social Democrats who are very, very unhappy with him. This is going to cost Mr. Biden in November, whatever little margin he has uh, in the polls so over Donald Trump or any other Republican. Uh, people will remember this one-sided posture that he took, and it is going to cost him. He may not lose money because there are lots of billionaires who will probably give him more money for the positions he's taking, but he will surely lose some votes. So I hope that Biden's awakening is not short-term, not just for uh, a couple of uh, viral, um, I don't know, statements he wants them to go viral uh, and uh, sort of restore his image as someone more balanced or he really means we will see only actions will speak and so we will see if the united states will one hold israel accountable for not holding the the settlers the extremist settlers in west bank accountable will the u.s demand israel does something about them number one and number two will the u.s Serious. I'm going to be writing about this. You can bet on this. There will be conversations reminding you if Biden does not do anything about the two-state solution after this crisis is over. So you can bank on me to at least write about this and also speak about this. So we will see whether uh, Mr. Biden is serious about the pronouncements that he's making now. And the third thing is... Um, will he redefine uh, the parameters of the Abrahamic Accords to include uh, a movement on the two-state solution while there is a movement for integrating Israel in the, in the middle in the region and the Middle East. So on this very short briefing uh, as a response to President Biden's statement, uh, I hope you found that interesting, thought-provoking. So please subscribe to Conversations, like the video, and press the bell icon. I am your host and your friend, Muhtadar Khan.